Welcome back to Squawk Box. Today, we are unveiling our eighth annual Disruptor 50. That's our annual list of fast-growing private companies that are transforming the economy. Julia Borston joins us now with a look at who made it onto this year's list. Julia. Good morning to you, Andrew. Well, this year's list was drawn from more than 1,300 nominees calculated based on a mix of quantitative and qualitative metrics with help from an advisory board of more than 50 leading academics from business schools around the world. And this year, we included an extra round of assessment to take into account each company's response to the pandemic. Here are the first five companies on this year's Disruptor 50 list. Number five, Klarna. The online payment company offers short-term credit to shoppers at more than 200,000 e-tailers and has become one of Europe's largest banks. If we can play a part in disrupting this industry and actually drive margins down by giving consumers a better offer, um, you know, that I think we have accomplished something great. Number four, Coursera. Demand soared for this online learning pioneer when COVID-19 hit and remote learning became the only option. Number three, Indigo Agriculture, on a mission to fight climate change and secure the world's food supply. Its Terraton initiative pays farmers to enrich their soil with carbon and keep it out of the atmosphere. And then over time, as, as farmers change their practices, we're actually reducing their footprint. In fact, can even flip that around and make farming carbon positive. So start to be part of the solution. Number two, Coupang, the Amazon of South Korea with a few twists, including reusable packaging and Dawn Delivery, its promise to deliver orders placed before midnight by 7 a.m. the next day. And number one, Stripe. If you're buying just about anything online, Stripe is likely helping with a payment. Partners range from Amazon to Zoom Video. The world's highest valued fintech company is backed by all-star investors, including Andreessen Horwitz, Peter Thiel, and Elon Musk. The company committed to remote work more than a year ago, hiring over 100 engineers with home as their home base. So it's been able to handle surging demand as all of its employees now work from home. This year's Disruptor 50 raised nearly $75 billion, massing a combined valuation of more than $277 billion. You can find the whole list plus more about our methodology on CNBC.com slash disruptors. Andrew? Nice list. Uh, quick question for you. What, what are really the, the trends that you're seeing that emerged on, on this year's list relative to last year's list? Well, we saw more fintech than ever. There were 12 fintech companies, five of which were focused just on payments. Of course, we had Stripe in the number one spot. And also, as we focus more on the trends that are accelerated by the pandemic, we saw healthcare and logistics. And then in terms of the underlying technology this year, Huge emphasis on machine learning and artificial intelligence. More than half of the companies on the list said that they used either AI or, uh, or machine learning. Okay, maybe a trickier question. What about the issue of diversity? And I ask because there's been so much focus on the lack of diversity in Silicon Valley. So how does this list stack up this year? Well, this list really reflects the lack of funding to black CEOs in Silicon Valley. There was not a single black CEO on this year's list. There were six female CEOs, 11 companies which had a female co-founder. So we see the trends of the sort of lack of diversity in terms of funding in the VC world really reflected here. Now, just to put that in perspective here, just 3% of VC funding goes to female CEOs and less than 1% to black CEOs, if you dig up back further to try to understand what's driving those trends, it's really in, in large part attributed to lack of diversity in VC investors. 65% of VC firms don't have a single VC, single female investor, and 80% of firms don't have a single black investor, um, according to All Raids and Black VC. So really um, a, a, a lot of questions happening right now about what can be done to improve the diversity um, among the VC community and also in the types of companies that get funded. Um, so there have been a, a number of announcements, Andrew, whether it's from Andreessen Horowitz, a new one out today um, from the National Venture Capital Association, trying to under address those underlying issues.